the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. By saluting all of you who have been standing for a very long time, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I came here this morning for three reasons. Number one, like um, Choma Jesus said, when we met and she told me about this vision, I made her a promise that by the grace of God, I will do my best, no matter how inconveniencing, to just come and honor and support her ministry. She truly is a good woman of God and we bless her. Let's celebrate her. Give her a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. The second reason why I am here is because I love Jesus with all my heart. And everything that makes for promoting his name is my passion. But the third reason why I am here is to encourage someone I... I'm very touched seeing all of the people standing here and then I people standing here and then I am aware that there are people who have been here right from afternoon. This was how I was standing in the crowd many years ago in the rain at Bonke Crusade. I stood for six hours praying in the spirit and crying and said, Lord, I know I'm already a man of God, but I know there can be more. And I prayed, I said, Lord, what is upon that man? Would you grant that it will come upon me? I stood for six hours. No rest, no seat, no nothing, but I was determined. It was in that crusade ground I saw the first vision of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We are going to have a few minutes this morning, but in the next two minutes, I want you to pray like you have never prayed. Father, the kind of fire that needs to fall on my destiny to turn my life around, let it fall now. Lift your voice in one, begin to pray. Are there people of prayer in this city? Pray from the depth of your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that fire fall. Give me understanding, Lord, that you will honor my waiting, my praising, my crying, my singing. You've been led through a session of very strong prophetic worship. Preachers pray. The youth pray. Wonderful things happen when we seek him at night. Pray for the sake of your destiny. Pray for the sake of your ministry. There are many of you here, the call of God is upon your life. I like you to pray. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted from the depth of your heart. This is part of the meeting. Let it fall on my destiny. Open my eyes to see.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please listen to this instruction. Listen very carefully. You are going to shout hallelujah seven times. Listen carefully. I will teach for a while. But I want you to shout hallelujah seven times. I will lead you. At the seventh time as you shout, not everybody, but there are a few people here. The kind of fire you have seen in your dreams, the visions you have seen, at that, help them. Just those under the anointing, there's no place to bring them out, but please just be your brother's keeper. Listen very carefully. There are angels here. Seven loud hallelujah. At the seventh time, there are altars that must go down there are gates that have been closed over families for decades people have tried to open it and it seems not to open that shout is a shout that commands ancient gates to be lifted are you ready or worry? number one Five. The anointing that needs to come upon your destiny that what your father could not do, what your mother could not do, the enchantments that are said nobody will rise from your family. Are you ready for the sixth shout? Six. Now get ready, this is a loud shout. This is not an ordinary shout. It's a shout that brings the anointing and the glory to your life. Listen, the fire of God is going to fall upon many, many, many as you shout. There are apostles and there are prophets. There are evangelists and there are pastors. There are prophetic worshippers. The mantle of your call, the mantle of your grace. Are you ready now? Seven! Take that grace! Take that abakadoshkata! Take that grace! Take that anointing! Let it fall upon you! All over this stadium! Let that unction fall! In the name of Jesus! Set you on fire! Prophetic fire! Apostolic fire! Prayer fire! Evangelistic fire! In the name of Jesus. Now please hear me. I want you to shout a loud amen. Every door that has refused to open over your destiny. I'm standing by the apostolic and the prophetic. And I prophesy. Lift up your heads. Oh ye gates. Be lifted ancient doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stand by the rod of the apostolic. I move you forward. Move into your destiny. Move into prophecy. Move into your destiny. Move into prophecy. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every force that has vowed that you will not rise. I come by this anointing tonight. May the ground open and swallow them. May the ground May the ground open and swallow them. That which has covered your glory, covered your face. In the name of Jesus, I tear that veil from your face. Please believe in what.
what is happening. We're in a serious prophetic atmosphere. Whatever has tied your feet so that the only thing going forward is your age. Nothing else is going forward. I stand by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic. I prophesy to you, go forward now. Go for Oweri, go forward now. Go forward now. I eat the chains falling. Hey, I eat the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains. Just help on that, those under the anointing. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won the victory. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Reliable God. Reliable God. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, for every man, for every woman, for every preacher, for everyone here represented, I decree and declare that everything that will not let you go must go for you now. In the name of Jesus. Now, here's what will happen. I mean, just I just want to give a charge. It's a prophetic worship, and we have been standing maybe just for 10 15 minutes. I want you to please pay attention to what I want to share, and then afterwards, I want to pray and release a grace upon your life. For many of you, you have seen this day in your dreams, you've seen it in visions. And you've been wondering, how will it happen? I announce to you that tonight is that night. In the name of Jesus. Please be silent, everyone. I'm seeing the number 23. They will begin to shout by the anointing. There is a strong anointing coming on them. If someone shouts like that close to you, you just help them. 23. I'm stretching my hands. I'm seeing fire across the country. Don't worry. 23, right now. I stretch my hands. 23. From the front to the back, the left to the right. It's an anointing that is separating you. Habarash. 
I wish some more God, heaven's gates open now, with understanding you order the seasons, creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasure. My wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open now, with understanding you order the season, creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the number 11, and the Lord is saying a mantle is coming upon you. You are the one anointed to open the gates of your family. Right now as I'm praying, 11 people, Paras Kadina Katabariata, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice, that unction is resting upon you now. Eleven people, may that grace, that pioneering grace, that will open a door that has not been opened, may it come upon you in the name of Jesus. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Listen very carefully to what I want to tell you. Just a few minutes and we'll pray. The move of God that is coming to this city, the move of God and that revival fire is not only a worry, it's the entire southeast. But it's important for you to understand that there are three kinds of people. There are three categories of people. You want to be part of this move. Listen carefully. There are three groups of people. The spiritual formation, the strategy for this revival is threefold. Now, please hear me. I don't know how you do this, but please be your brother's keeper. Don't let anyone injure themselves. There are people who will start running now as I'm speaking by the Spirit. It's the shackles of delay that is breaking. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Right now, I'm declaring by the Spirit. The power of God that came upon Elijah, that grace for speed, you will find out that they want to start running. Just hold them where they are. So they don't enjoy themselves. I release that grace right now. Parante shani kaparus gati alas kadabakatos. Krate kapakatos. No more delay. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Israel. Please hold them, whether you are an usher or not. You just help them. There is something the Holy Ghost is doing over their life. Yokes of delay. Yokes of delay, yokes of delay, yokes of delay, yokes of delay. I'm breaking it now by this unction and this anointing. Yokes of delay, slow movement in life. I command it to give way now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Same power that conquered the earth lives in me. 
lives in me Your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me Same power that conquered the earth lives in me lives
any activity that is motivated by your genuine love for Jesus and your desire to see his kingdom come is called ministry. You can be preaching, but if that preaching is not motivated by your love for Jesus and is not intended to reveal him, you are not in ministry. Any activity motivated by a genuine love for Jesus and intended to reveal him is called ministry. That means if your love for Jesus motivates you to go into business so that you can have the resources to enable the advancement of the kingdom, that business is called ministry. If you are a husband and a wife, a father and a mother, and your love for Jesus leads you to have a child that you will train to become a prophet tomorrow for the sake of the kingdom, that act of parenting motivated by love for Jesus and intended to reveal his glory is called ministry. Ministry has nothing to do with the pulpit. Ministry has nothing to do with the crowd. It has nothing to do with holding a mic. It has everything to do with your motivation and your intention. The second group of people God is looking for. There is no such thing as separating your life, ministry, and other things. You are either serving the purposes of God with your life or you are just wasting your time. Is someone learning now? Yes. If you are a student and your purpose of going to school motivated by your love for Jesus and intended to use your qualification to give you an edge in life to the end that Jesus be revealed and glorified through your life, that act of schooling is called ministry. Most times we think ministry has to do with standing behind the pulpit, holding a mic, and preaching to a congregation. That may be a dimension, but ministry is not in the activity or the ritual. Ministry is in the purity of the intent, the motivation. The first group of people that God is looking for this morning are watchmen and intercessors. People who will dedicate their lives to prayer until revival comes upon your land. Prayer that will shift the spiritual climate and make it conducive for kingdom come. Then number two, the sent ones, those who are called saviors, those we call ministers. Not just men of God, not just apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Those are just ministers within the context of the fivefold. Politicians driven by their love for Jesus with a desire to reveal him. Businessmen driven by their love for Jesus. Captains of industry, legal practitioners driven by their love for Jesus and using the geography of their witness as a platform to see Jesus glorified. Number three. The third category of people that God is looking for. For the revival fire to fall. Are those we call kingdom financiers. Listen carefully. If the gospel and the advancement of the kingdom. Is not behind your pursuit for wealth. It is a mundane pursuit that will eventually waste your time. Hear me? Nobody goes to his grave with money. Did you hear what I said? No matter the millions and the billions of naira, pounds and dollars that you have, if kingdom come, is not your motivation. If you have 10 cars, you cannot enter 10 at the same time. No matter how wealthy you are, you don't put your hand in another car, your leg in another car. All of you can only stay in one place. If you have a house with 200 rooms, all of you can, you can only stay in one room at a time. Hear me? It's good to make money. It's good to seek prosperity. 
But if the kingdom is not behind your pursuit, believe me, you are wasting your time. Solomon, a man who deviated from his love from God and began to pursue all kinds of things. At the end of his life, this is what he said. Vanity upon vanity. He said, all is vanity. Romans chapter 10 and verse 15. He says, how shall they go? How shall they preach unless they be sent? I sat back there quietly. You cannot imagine how inspired and happy I have been just watching all of you rejoice and celebrate. And when Shoma Jesus told me that all of these equipments, what as it is, is, is for her, her ministry, her prophetic music ministry, I thought about it and I said, my God, you can imagine. Can I tell you the truth? The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it up. You must redefine your reason for seeking money. Because you see, I'm saying this because our young people are getting into all kinds of nonsense because we, we for some reason, people try to seek money because they are looking for respite, and significance that is too small a reason for God to bless you the kingdom must be behind your motivation and your pursuit for money this is why people join occultic groups this is why they do everything desperation for money by all means you must replace that mundane desire with a sincere desire to see Jesus lifted Imagine that God anoints someone and he says, show my Jesus for next year. Consider the bills on me completely gone. You just focus on prayer and preparation. For instance, can I tell you, it pains my heart when I see us spending so much time in church, praying and crying for money, and the, the entire amount we are praying for is what somebody will be spending in the club in one night. And that is what we are fasting and shouting. There are more useful, more kingdom-driven, significant things to pray for. There are souls to pray for. There are destinies to be established to pray for. This is why God must raise people. There are financial apostles that must rise from this meeting. Men and women with a strange grace for wealth, but not driven by the mundane loss to make a name. It is that you are saying, God bless me for the sake of your house. Can I tell you this? The last treasurer of Jesus disappointed him. He's still looking for a replacement. You want to be his new treasurer? You must pass the test. Judas did not pass. There are men and women God wants to trust with levels of wealth beyond your imagination. But can God trust you? God gave you one million, you left church, you left everything about God. Back to a mundane life. No, that is not the purpose of money. The purpose of money is not just for buying cars and houses and disturbing. There is a place for comfort. But primarily, the reason why he gave them gold and silver in Egypt was so that when he makes a demand for it, they will be able to build him a tabernacle in the wilderness. Three categories of people God is looking for this morning. Number one, let me repeat again. Watchmen. Men and women who understand how to pray with understanding. There are many ministers of God who have not yet been revealed in your city. Some of them are standing here looking at me. It will take the intercessory ministry of prayer to create that climate for your unveiling. Can I tell you this? A territory that does not pray will helplessly be victims of demonic assaults. A territory that does not pray. He said he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Always to pray. Always to pray. He says Elijah was a man of like passion. He prayed that there be no rain. 
over a space of three and a half years. Then he prayed again. But if your prayer life has gone down, you should know it's a real attack. And don't allow this vigil end without you receiving fresh fire that reignites your passion for prayer. Five minutes prayer, ten minutes rolling around while you are sleeping, you can't command power that way. The wickedness of our day requires people of power. He says if you turn aside in the day of battle, it is because your strength is small. You must build capacity in prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to build capacity in prayer. One more time. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to build capacity in prayer. Hear me? If you are here and the call of God is upon your life, obtain grace from God to separate yourself from mundane distractions. Thank God for social media, but you must manage it with wisdom. Otherwise, it will tear your destiny into pieces. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Great men, don't just covet the anointing of men of God. Covet the, the disciplines that bring that grace. Don't just sit there wishing for double portion, triple portion. There, there are wells that you must dig by yourself. Discipline yourself. Avoid premature manifestation and stay with God and grow. This obsession for ministry, don't let it kill you. Don't hurry seasons in your life. Anybody you see who is standing by the grace of God among the many things that brought them strong is the ministry of prayer. God never prayed as God. But when he became a man, he prayed. Because all men pray. You must pray with power, pray with passion, pray consistently. God is calling you and telling you you will be a foremost prophet, a foremost apostle in Oweri. Just putting posters and getting protocol is nonsense. It's an absolute waste of time. Discipline yourself to pray. You may be alone, but pray. Pray into superior versions of yourself. The primary assignment of prayer is not for petitions. It's for transformation. You can pray into a stronger version of yourself. You can pray into a more faith-filled version of yourself. Can I tell you, I love you with all my heart. That's why I came. But let me admit to you sincerely, sitting down there and just looking... I could sense weakness, weakness of spirit in many people here. Weakness, sincere desire, but the spirit man is too weak to do anything strong. Take it as a rebuke of love. Can I tell you, youth, start bringing yourself together. You don't need to have a ministry. It does not need to have a name. Challenge yourself. My eyes will not see sleep any day until I have prayed. You don't have to bring an ambitious goal. Dedicated discipline every night. You are registering yourself in the realm of the spirit. Soon demons will say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. You add your name to that list. You don't just say gates open and they are open. You don't just say they seek be healed and no. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain the fire to pray. Any association, any hear me, any association and any friendship that downplays the ministry of prayer, don't fight them but lead them quietly. Your destiny is too precious to toy around with. There are demons waiting to hinder your manifestation. You look at those who have gone before you. If you want to do end time ministry, genuinely, you want to see revival come. I hear you talk of cultism. I hear you talk of all kinds of occult groups. They are only as powerful as the weakness of your prayer allows. One man, Elijah, Shut the heavens for three and a half years. 
when it was time, the prophets of Baal came. They did everything that used to work for them. But this time around, there was one envoy carrying power who was standing here. The enchantments refused to work. From morning till night, they even lacerated themselves. Oh, Baal, hear us. And Elijah was laughing. He said, wake him up. Prayer. When he transforms you, you become powerful. Stop running around just envy men of God. Stop running around just copying how they speak and how they preach. Go back to the place of prayer and evolve into a genuine superior version of yourself. God is looking for watchmen, men of prayer and men of intercession. Is God challenging you? And then God is looking for everyone who has the mentality of a sent one. When you know you are sent, you are not careless with your assignment. Look at this. Let me use this gentleman. Come, my friend. Or this, my, my dear. Look at this. If I send this, my dear son here, and stand up. If I ask him, go and touch this for me. He is sent. Because he has the mentality that he is sent. Even when something tries to distract him, he remembers, I'm not going on my own. If you do business like you are sent, you will not compromise. If you do ministry like you are sent, it is lack of a sent mentality that leads to all of these unnecessary compromises. God, trust me in ministry. Trust me in politics. Trust me in the academia. Trust me in media. Trust me in business. And then number three, and I really came here to pray for men and women who God will be trusting with the wealth of the kingdom. Let me tell you this. The Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekatos. Katebranda Katapakotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. sincerely genuinely you know where God has spoken to you for some of you that grace and that oil of an intercessor has been looking for you you are going to pray and say Lord I am ready to receive it there are people here you have been ineffective as far as kingdom service is concerned I just define ministry for you for some of you who have been preaching now you have realized that although you are a preacher you have not been in ministry because your motivation is a name for yourself your motivation is fame for yourself it's not to see Jesus lifted now you pray and repent before God and those who will pray and say Lord I vow and I covenant. You see, when Joma Jesus came up here, she made a statement that was instructive. She said for about 30 or 35 years, she covenanted with God. Can I tell you, covenants are powerful and God remembers them. There are people here who say, Lord, I covenant with you that if you lift me, you honor me even financially. I will ensure that your house and your purposes never go down. I don't know what category you belong to, but in the next five minutes, I leave you with your maker. Open your mouth and begin to cry. Cry from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying. Don't be distracted. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me whatever you want to say. Lord, you can say through me whoever you want to lift. Lord, you can lift through me whoever you want.
to bless. Lord, you can bless. Are you praying? Wherever you want to go, Lord, you can go through me. Whatever you want to touch, Lord, you can touch through me. Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless to me. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I am that vessel. I yield myself to you. I yield my everything to you. Someone is crying before Jesus. Right where you are, he's hearing you. Right where you are, he's hearing you. Make sure you are praying. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do to me. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Silence, everybody. Please look at me. Let me have your attention, everyone. Many years ago, I encountered Jesus Christ. And when I gave him my life and my all, I meant it. Can I tell you this? Playing games with God, playing games with church, playing games with religion is only going to waste our time. The Bible says, and I want everybody to hear me, there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. There are some that trust in horses and chariots, some trust in certificates, some trust in their uncles and political connections. But hear me. Scattered in this stadium with thousands of people here. There are many people who have never genuinely met Jesus. Being around church is not the same thing as meeting Jesus. Holding a Bible is not the same thing as meeting Jesus. Having a Christian name is not the same thing as meeting Jesus. Being a youth church leader, being a worker in church is not the same as meeting Jesus. There were several people around Jesus. Some wanted to make money out of him. Some wanted to take advantage of him to rise and sit in a place of prominence. Only few wanted to be transformed by him. I want to make an altar call. In as much as there is no space for you to come out, but you are going to indicate by a lift of hand when I'm done. Listen to me. There are two categories of people. I have to do this before I begin to speak over your life. From the beginning of this vigil, up until now, through the worship sessions, the prayer sessions, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that it is time to win this war of destiny once and for all. Perhaps you came here because you heard that Apostle Joshua Selman is coming or Choma Jesus is put in a meeting, or there's something happening, and you wanted to be part of the history. Jesus is calling you, and calling you seriously. His call is beyond religion. His call is beyond church. He says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I, Imo State, will give you rest. Category number two. There are people who are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but sincerely, as it is right now, I cannot say I'm a child of God. My life has gone haywire. 
I have deviated from the things of God. It doesn't mean you are an evil person. It just means you need restoration fast. We used to sing a song those days in the seminary. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. You know that song? Powerful song. Then we sang others like, Hast me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. We would cry singing those songs. Savior, 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 hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Jesus is calling you home. Hear me. Before the prodigal son received mercy from his father, the Bible says he came to himself and he said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. And I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. The Bible says, while the father saw him afar off, he ran and embraced him and kissed him and put back the signet ring. Now, all over this stadium, I want to make this noble call. This is the greatest miracle before I speak over your life. You are here right now. And you are saying, Apostle, I cannot lie. Jesus is here. I need Jesus. I need to make it right. I want you to lift both of your hands high above your head. As a sincere sign of surrender. Please don't play games with God tonight. It's not by force. But if you mean it with Jesus tonight. There's nothing to be ashamed. Complete surrender. God bless you. Wave those hands. Let him see it. Wave those hands. Wave those hands. Let Jesus see the hands that are lifted. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Come bless me now my savior i come to thee keep the hands lifted i'm about to lead you to pray now listen very carefully i want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you are lifting your hands both of them as a sign of surrender are you ready to shout this loud and clear whether you are the balcony i see you jesus is seeing you all over jesus is seeing you at the back wherever and for those who are following online from whatever nation, here at this vigil, here in worry. Jesus is giving us an opportunity. Say this loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. This morning, I stand before you, open and sincere. I declare that I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my destiny. I ask you to forgive my sin. I declare that I cannot help myself. But I thank you for the sacrifice for my sin on the cross. And right now, I ask you to come into my heart be my savior be my lord be my king i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that the power of sin the power of satan the power of hell 
and the power of the grave, keep the hands lifted, is broken over me. From this morning till all my days, I declare that I am saved, I am born again, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Keep the hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these precious ones lifting their hands in total surrender. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Lord, they have come before you. I cry, O oh God, according to to the integrity of your word they have confessed the lordship of jesus therefore i declare your sins forgiven and i declare in the name of jesus that the power of satan the power of sin the power of hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight i call you the righteousness of god you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus put your hands down Give me about five more minutes. I want to pray a prayer that will change your life now. I am serving the God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. I am serving the God of miracles. I know. Sing it two more times. Yes, I know. Hallelujah. I'm serving the Lord of miracles. I know. I know, yes I know, I'm serving the Lord of miracles, I know, yes One more time. I know, I'm serving the Lord of miracles, I know, yes I know. Now, I'm going to do three things in one. I want to pray for the sick right now. We cannot end this glorious meeting without praying for the sick. And number two, I'm going to be praying that every force and every power holding on to your destiny, that he must let you go. And then number three is the final impartation. The grace that has been looking for your head. My assignment is to connect that mantle to your head. Are you ready to pray? In one minute, I'd like you to pray. God, visit me one more time. Please, quickly pray. Don't be distracted. Visit me one more time. Cry to the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Now, if you are sick in your body, if there is any part of your body that is ailing you or you are standing in for a loved one who is sick, place your hand right now wherever you are trusting God for a miracle. Please do it quickly. Your eyes, place it on your eyes. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. We have to rebuke the complete gospel Hear me? The complete gospel demands that when Jesus is preached, an opportunity must be given for his power to heal and to save. I've got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message unto you I bring. Keep your hands there. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look and leave. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look your hands there. I want to pray for you right now. Let there be silence everywhere. I want to pray. Now hear me. I'm going to pray and declare that the healing anointing will begin to touch people right where you are. 
Don't force anyone, whether you're on a wheelchair, whether you're on crutches, whether you are blind, you're deaf, whether there's any kind of pain right where you are, I want to pray for you. Now hear me. A lady is going to shout right now, loud under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. When that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to flow. Sometimes I don't know why the Holy Spirit does this. But it's, it's mysterious how he walks. A strong anointing is coming on a lady right now. A loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Now we're ready to pray. When I say in Jesus' name, I want you to thunder a loud amen. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now I decree and declare. Every spirit that is back of any infirmity here. Hear the word of the Lord. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. I decree and declare. Let God's people go free now. Every power of witchcraft, every power connected to ancestry, connected to foundations and bloodline, I decree and declare by the help them by the power that raised Christ from the dead. If there is any altar holding on to your destiny and it will not let you go, I set it on fire now. Help them. I set it on fire now. I release them right now. Release their destinies right now. Every altar, territorial altars, please help them. In the name of Jesus. Marine spirits, witches and wizards, altars, covenants. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. Release God's people now. And right now I decree and declare for all those who are sick in your body, I bring you the life and the healing power of Jesus. Be healed now. Be healed now. Blind eyes be open in the name of Jesus. Deaf ears be open in the name of Jesus. Those on crutches having problems with their limbs, I declare life and strength to your limbs now. Every growth around your body, lungs in the breast, and all kinds of growth, I command it to give way now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My great headaches be healed in Jesus' name. Peptic ulcer be healed in Jesus' name. Every negative genotype, we change it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone barren, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I announce the arrival of your supernatural children. Every other sickness, whether mentioned or not, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, I decree and declare, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Now, I want to speak over your life. Look up, please. I know that the prophetic ministry has been so abused. Many people do not even know the power of the prophetic again. But just because a ministry may have been abused by carelessness and imbalance does not mean it is not potent. You will need the prophetic in your life to rise. I want to speak over your life. And while we are doing that, all the the Choma Jesus team, may I request that you come quickly. I want to also pray, you coordinate them, whoever, all of the people, so that I will just speak over your life. I prophesied as I was commanded. He said, and bones, a sound. Son of man, he said, can these bones live again? Son of man, can this job live again? 
Can this family live again? Can this destiny live again? Can this shame and reproach be rolled away? He said, prophesy. I stand by the God who called me. And I speak over everyone here. Under the sound of my voice. Every door that has refused to open over your destiny. I prophesy to you. A father. May that door be open now. Have you heard of this proverb that in one day a nation is born? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that God has showed you should happen this year, 2022. And it has not yet happened. I command it to begin to happen now. Hear me, these hands that are lifted, if there is anything tiny down, that your hand is a parakatosh kaniga barakatosiata. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. Help them, please. And anything that has tied your hand, I stand here, oh, where you hear me? I speak by the mantle of God. I lose you right now. 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 Hear me, if there is any family here represented that is still worshipping idols, still bowing down to deities, I stand by the God of heaven and I declare those powers die now. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Listen carefully, I want to rebuke the spirit of death. Death is a spirit. There are families with the patterns of untimely death. Just when you are about to enjoy the faithfulness of God, death comes. There are some of you every two, two years, somebody must die. Every six, six months. These are demonic patterns. Don't wait till it gets to your turn. Help that lady. I stand by the God of heaven. Every demonic pattern, especially death, over anyone's family here, I speak by the God of heaven. I command that pattern. Help, help them. Oh my God. Please help them. I command that pattern broken now. Broken now. Broken now. Now, please listen carefully. There are people. The spirit that operates in their house. Is such that they have to eat by being slaves to others. For you to rise and to be established. It is what happened to Jacob in the house of Laban. Jacob said, leave me, let me establish myself. But Laban went and consulted with diviners. And they said, no, we must keep him here. I want to release such families. Brilliant people, no job. Graduates, no rising. Intelligent people, no open doors. I stand by the God of heaven. That curse that is lying on your life and your destiny. By the blood of the eternal covenant. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. Hear me. Two more prayers and we're done. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. The Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work. Do you know there are people that start things and never finish? There are some of you, there are houses that have been built since before you were born. Till today is not completed. Anybody that tries to rise, a spirit brings them down. God is the author and finisher. I want to pray for you. The mantle that makes for completion. That you are not going to start something and then die on the way. You will not start something. You will not sow and another reap. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear me. Last prayer point. Thou shalt increase my greatness. 
and comfort me on every side. Listen, can I tell you, it is in God's destiny for everyone to be great. It's good to clap for great people. When Shoma came and stood here, I was listening to her story. If I understand how well, I was so touched. Sold Mama Put, fried granite, and the God of heaven, the one who is the lifter of men, lifting her to what she is now. I want to pray and release a grace on your life. Hear me. Hear me. Believe me. It does not matter your background. It does not matter your lowly estate. Some of you are like Gideon hiding and saying, I am the least in my father's house. But there is a God that is able to lift. There is that song she sings. I wish I say, I, I understand it. I was this, uh, what was that song again? Okay, more. Very powerful song. Every time I hear that song, I told her, I said, there is, a, there is a real anointing upon that song that breaks chains. I want to speak over your life. Please hear me. Anyone you see, whether in ministry or politics or business, that ever became great beyond a certain level, I assure you, is either by the by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Oh, where you hear me? I speak by the spirit of grace. Help them, please. This mantle right now, at the count of three, may that mantle rest upon your life and change your story forever. Are you ready now? At the count of three, you will shout Jesus. One, two, three. Take that mantle. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that mantle. Take that mantle. Change your destiny by this unction. May your family change. May your ministry change. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you, hallelujah, now listen carefully. Of God and her team. Stretch your hands and pray like you are praying for your mother. Stretch your hands and pray like you are praying for your sister. Stretch your hands and pray like you are praying for someone who has blessed you. For some of you, you have benefited from a philanthropy. For some of you, you have benefited from her worship. Deliverances and miracles have happened. Please pray, Lord, lift her. Pray, Lord, honor her. Pray, Lord, increase her. Keep her to enjoy the blessings of her children's children. Is this how you pray for those who have blessed you? Pray, oh God. Raise financial helpers. Raise helpers. Multiply our ministry. One more minute. You are praying for her. Bless her with good health. Lord, keep her for us. Protect her. No weapon fashioned against her and her children and her family will prosper. That when she cries unto you, answer her. Remember your covenant with her. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I will pray for her and I will pray for the entire team 
in the name of Jesus, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. By this apostolic grace, I lay my hands upon you, dear woman of God, matriarch of power. And in Jesus' name, I release you to a new dimension of impact, a new dimension in ministry. Are you saying amen? A new dimension. I pray that in this new season that she's entering, strange financial helpers. Some of you are here and God is going to begin to speak to you. To stand by this woman and to see that all her evangelical outreaches continue to go far. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands prophetically as a symbol of your productivity. In Jesus' name, expand. In Jesus' name, enlarge. Every power that fights you goes down instantly. In the name of Jesus. You have humbled yourself before men. God will lift you publicly. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for the entire team. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over the entire team. Where is the gentleman that organized that? that where is he? You are a man of God. Let me pray for you. That a grace, there is an anointing that will come upon your life. And God will shift you to a new dimension. God is going to be granting you access to deep levels of revelation. And then you will be increasing your honor and your visibility. Step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare a new season for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Anybody who fights you goes down instantly. In the name of Jesus. And for all of you who have served in this crusade, I stand in partnership with the woman of God and I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus because you have served, you will not beg. Because you have served, you will not cry. Because you have served, you will not die before your time. In the name of Jesus, everything that makes for shame and reproach over your life, I roll it away like a curtain. I extend this prayer to the workers, the protocol, the ushers, all who have served in the name of Jesus. The Bible says a worker is deserving of his wages. Therefore, God bless you. God bless you. God lift you in the name of Jesus. I pray for every man of God and every ministry represented in Oweri. Like a united body, not fighting one another. May you rise to a new dimension. I pray for the church in Oweri. You will not go down. Every pastor, every prophet, every evangelist, every teacher, every prayer ministry, every worshiper. The grace to rise to a new level, let it come upon you. I pray over your campuses. In the name of Jesus, let fire fall upon those campuses. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have honored me tonight. I pray that this God who called me, may he honor you individually. In the mighty and the marvelous name of Jesus. Oweri, thank you so much. This is my first time after many years and it will certainly not be my last time. The Lord bless you and increase you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.